All right, what up, y'all? It's Matt Shop here. So you can see, I just got done changing the spark plugs in my truck, and I got them laid out right here, and I got a bunch of other stuff laid out right here, because I'm about to give y'all a couple quick tips on changing these things. So this is an 06 Chevy Silverado 1500 4.8 liter Vortec. It's a mouthful, I know, but that's what I'm working on right here. This is a truck, and uh, you know the tips. I mean, they'll work for anything. But before we get started, I want y'all to check the links in the description after the video's over because I'm going to have links to all this stuff I used in this video in the description, all organized and stuff, so y'all can check it out and, you know, get the stuff there so you don't have to look all over the place for it. And more than likely, it's going to be a better deal, you know, on Amazon than it is uh, at the local big box auto parts store. So, with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so this is a GM vehicle, obviously, because it's a Silverado. And I got the spark plugs laid out right here, so let me grab one of those real quick. Okay, so this is an AC Delco plug, and these are the old plugs. This is a 41-985, and this is an Iridium spark plug. Okay, so, you know, I got all these spark plugs changed, and you can see they were, uh, you know, pretty much perfect. Uh, I Hopefully I can get the coloring of these on here. There we go. Not too rich, not too lean, golden, brown. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'm not filming a video, you know in a hundred degree sun because that's how hot it is right now so I'm in the shade but I hope y'all can see that good enough so that's how they all are they all look really good but that's not the purpose of this video the purpose of this video is to give you all some quick tips so my number one pet peeve when I go to change spark plugs is right here this is the the solution to the problem you know it takes two seconds it's cheap and lasts a long time no one does this, and it's a good way, if you don't do this, to ensure that you're going to strip out your spark plug threads, you know. It can happen. So what I'm going to show you all is going to prevent that. Alright, so this is Permatex Aluminum Anti-Seize Lubricant, and I'm sure everybody knows what this stuff is. You know, this one's silver in color. They make one that's copper in color. I've been told this isn't aluminum at all. It's something called molybdenum disulfide, which, you know, is a chemical name for what's in here. That's what I was told. I haven't looked it up to make sure, but I don't really care because the stuff works, whatever it is. And uh, this is what you're going to do is you're going to put this on your spark plug threads. Now, if anybody, you know on here has changed spark plugs before and you go to change them and they're stuck in there right it feels like somebody put them in there with an the impact or something stupid you know I've had to get breaker bars before to take spark plugs out and it's all because somebody just doesn't want to put a little bit of anti-seize on there okay this stuff is cheap you know I don't want to say how much it is on here but it's cheap and it this whole tube lasts a long time and all you have to do is Get a little bit, right? Put it on the spark plug and go around, making sure, you know, you, you probably don't want to start up that high, but start down a little lower and just rub it all the way around the spark plug. And, you know, it's halfway done because I'm not going to waste this stuff on old spark plug. But you get the idea, you know, make sure you don't get it on the electrode, make sure you don't get it on anything that's important. Just, uh, you know, get it on the threads, screw it in. And you're good. I mean, that's all you have to do. Alright, so that's my number one tip for y'all. So, this isn't in any kind of order or anything like that, you know. It's just as I'm thinking of it. There's no particular order, you know, best to worst or anything like that. I do this every time I change spark plugs. Everything I'm about to show y'all. Alright, so my tip number two for y'all 
is spark plug gaps. So everybody knows what these things look like. They're just the cheap little rings they sell at the checkout at the auto parts store. This is a spark plug gapper. Now, uh, technically, these are not supposed to be used on uh, spark plugs with uh, precious metal electrodes, which would be platinum, iridium, double platinum. Technically, they're not supposed to be used for that. They're just supposed to be used for standard, you know, copper plugs. But, you know, if you can't find the right one, I don't have the right one here with me right now, but it looks like, kind of like this, but it has these little metal rings on it. And you're supposed to use that to check it because if you get up in there and you mess with the gap, these are old, so I don't care. You know, you're supposed to open the gap like that and then you bang it on a piece of wood or something to close it up and then you get in here. Everybody knows how to do this, I hope. If you're watching my videos, I hope you know how to do this. And then you check your spark plug gap, right? Well, there's a little piece in there. It's that tiny little piece. Everybody knows what it looks like right there, right on the tip of the electrode, okay? That's a precious metal. Then there's this tip, which is eroded because these are old. That's a precious metal, right, on the tip. And you can damage that stuff with these. So I'll put links to both of them, but check out the one I'm talking about in the description because I'll, I'll find that one for y'all so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so everybody says, you know, spark plugs come pre-gapped. And I think it's total BS, um, you know, for the most part. They get banged around, dinged around, they're used for different applications, all this kind of stuff. So you want to make sure and check the spark plug gap. Now, with that being said, for uh, GM vehicles, they're extremely, extremely picky about, GM that is, about the spark plug gap. They're preset from the factory, so if you pull a GM spark plug out of the box and uh, you check the gap on it, and it's not the spec that it's supposed to be. I don't remember what these are. I, th I say if it's 40 thousandths of an inch or a 0 .4, 0.40, right? Well, y'all can't see that, but 0 .40, say if that's the spec, right? And you pull it out of the box, it should read 0 .40, 0 .40, 0 .40 for every single one. Say you get one that's 0.20 okay it's damaged what they want you to do is take that spark plug go get another one and make sure it's 0.40 there they don't want you to regap in these GM spark plugs because uh, if that electro gets damaged or the tip or the little puck on there or whatever gets damaged it's gonna affect performance so that's just something to keep in mind make sure that your gap is good for all of your uh, spark plugs, just check them, right? And another thing on these spark plugs is, since this is a GM vehicle, and this is about to get, you know, kind of complicated, but there's a service bulletin floating around the internet and on forums and stuff, and I'll link to it in the description so y'all can read it for yourself. But what it says is, um, some of the trucks you know, the GM trucks, Silverados, Sierras of certain model years and all this kind of stuff. They came from the factory with one spark plug. I think it was double platinum and they switched them to iridium. Or it came with iridium and they switched them with double platinum to stay competitive in the marketplace is what the service bulletin says. And, you know, it gets way too complicated for me. Um, but let me know if y'all know anything about that in the description, you know. What I did was, I just took the plugs out, these are iridium, I just took the plugs out and I just swapped them out with uh, iridium ones for this because that's what was in there. So these are, four one nine eight fives. I swapped them out. My new ones are 41-110, okay? So that's the part number for the new one. 
for this specific vehicle. So you, you got to keep all these things in mind, you know, when you're looking for spark plugs. But the number one tip here is, and the number one thing I want you all to take from this video is, only use, and I'm going to catch a bunch of flack for this, I know, I know I am, only use the spark plugs that were made for your vehicle, the OEM spark plugs. So this is a Chevy, I use AC Delcos. Now, you know, I might be totally wrong on this, you know, I have a Ranger right here next to me and I put auto lights in it. I don't know what it comes with from the factory, if they're Motorcraft, probably Motorcraft plugs, but that's just me. AC Delco, GM vehicle, GM plugs. Ford vehicle, Ford plugs. Um, if y'all watch my outboard videos, Evan Rude's American Outboards, Champion plugs. You know, I'm not going to put NGK plugs in my truck. Some of y'all might do it. That's up to y'all. These plugs are supposed to last 100,000 miles. So I'm going to have to trust these plugs. You know what I mean? If they're supposed to last that long, I'm going to go with these. That's just my opinion. Give me flack in the comments. I'm sure you already will. Let's move on to the next tip. All right, so my third tip is dielectric grease. Now, hopefully y'all know what this stuff is. Um, this is dielectric grease, and what you do with this is pop the cap, and it's like silicone-based stuff, right? So you just take a little bit on your finger, and I'm not going to do it, but you put a little bit on your finger, And you grab your new spark plug and you just coat the end of it just a little bit right just coat a little bit of it that way it doesn't get corrosion down in there and mess up your spark plug so that's a really good tip don't glob it on there put a little bit on here and here's the secret right you coat the ceramic part the porcelain part whatever it is in dielectric grease that way you can take your boots on and off and it doesn't rip the boot off and also put a little bit of dielectric grease down in that boot but i'm talking just a little bit don't glob it on there all right so my fourth tip is swivels so swivels i know this is kind of a cheap tip but I figured I'd include it. Swivels are really important for getting down in those spots where it's extremely hard to get at. Some spark plugs, like this is a V8, so it's got, you know, the cylinders are like that on either side. And it can be a real chore to get at some of them. So you can use a swivel to get down in there. And you can see right here, this is just a 3-8 swivel. I'm sure they have well, I know they have all different kinds, but this is what I use, just a cheap 3.8 swivel. Now, here's what I use, just a 3.8 ratchet, um, an extension, and a spark plug uh, socket. So, this is just a spark plug socket with the little rubber in there so that the spark plug doesn't fall out on you. And definitely do this with this one. If y'all don't know, you know, everybody should have one of these. I mean, they're in darn near every tool set, you know, ever sold. And they just have that little rubber boot down in there so it don't fall out. That way it doesn't fall out on you. And I don't have mine laid out right here, but a short extension about like that, you know about half the length of this. I don't know how long they are, maybe four inches or so. Those can come in handy too. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. So that's just some of my tips and tricks on how to change spark plugs. Um, let me know in the comments down below what y'all think and what some of y'all's tips and tricks are. And don't forget to check the links in the description because I'll link y'all up to all the stuff I used in this video. The dielectric grease, the anti-seize, that other uh, spark plug gap tool, spark plugs, 
the information about the GM spark plugs. I know some of y'all want to read that, so don't forget to check out those links down below. And if y'all enjoyed this video, which I know you did, make sure to subscribe for more automotive and tool related videos. And don't forget to like and comment while y'all are at it. Later.